Hey everybody, this is C-Dub for Wofo Yo Pathfinding Resources. You know, we've been talking about situational and spiritual awareness ever since the start of the year. And I've been wanting to talk about a few things that occur in both our spiritual as well as our natural lives. Today, I wanted to talk about groupthink, echo chambers, and genuine thought. Basically, groupthink is pretty much what it sounds like. Everyone in your group is thinking the same. In other words, there's no diversity and therefore no balance. The trouble is that if you have group think in an organization, then you become more vulnerable to being blindsided by adversity. Sometimes this can be intentional adversity where someone is wanting to weaken or end your group. Sometimes it can just be the consequence of not taking care of situations that need to be addressed because you're unaware they exist. First Corinthians 12, four says, now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. So here's where we mess up. We like to feel validated. We will tend to gravitate towards those that agree with us and have a like mindset. And this is natural. In fact, when you have a group of people with a similar gifting and focus, it can help form an effective team. The danger is that we can fall into the trap of viewing someone with a different viewpoint or way of approaching a problem as someone who is against us. But this isn't always the case. In fact, we see this very mindset in the disciples in Luke 9, 48 and 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Don't get me wrong. There is plenty of opposition in the world, but we should make sure that we are familiar enough with the Holy Spirit to know what he's doing. The Gospels give us the mission. However, there is some leeway and freedom in Christ as to how he uses us to accomplish that mission. When we get bogged down in details, we can fail to see what God is doing overall, and we can end up fighting one another instead of advancing the kingdom. Let's say you're starting a business. You have people that specialize in supply, accounting, distribution, marketing, and legal. Each one is going to have their unique approach as well as opinion as to what the most important function of the business is. However, if there isn't balance, things get off kilter really quick. If an accountant has too much influence, you can have immaculate books and still not make a profit because human behavior can be ignored. If you let the marketing guy just do what he wants, then you can get in a lot of hot water logistically and legally because they know behavior and trends but can overpromise and underdeliver. So there's a balance, and the overall mission statement of the company is the guiding principle. It's no different with the body of Christ. If we don't have balance, we won't appreciate the fact that God isn't limited to just one approach to spreading the gospel. Neither has he limited his people. So how does this happen? If we aren't careful, we can view those that see things different as disapproving of us rather than simply disagreeing with an idea or method we have. When someone comes along that sees things the way we do and agrees with us, the bottom line is it feels good. And if we're not careful, those that agree with us are the only people we will listen to. Now, we want to have like-minded people when it comes to focusing on and completing a mission. And we all know people that will say something can't be done. I'm not talking about those. But if we don't keep our egos in check, and only listen to those that agree, we have just created an echo chamber. Everyone is just saying the same thing. The problem with this is that when everyone is agreeing with you, you don't know everything. So if there is a blind spot or weakness in your planning or performance, you'll never be able to make the needed adjustments to be more effective. If you are in a competitive environment, your opponent will exploit these to render you ineffective. In addition, if the echo chamber environment goes on long enough, this groupthink culture becomes habit and habits become tradition. And according to Matthew 15, 6, our traditions can cause the word of God to be ineffective. In a more secular environment, it can cause the organization to be ineffective too. So how do we avoid this groupthink echo chamber mindset? Well, keeping our ego in check and realizing that we don't have all the answers is a start. Since we don't have all the answer, maybe it isn't a bad idea to ask questions so we can gain a more complete picture. 
Lastly, we should not be afraid of someone that has an original thought or a unique way of looking at things. In a groupthink situation, these people are often viewed as threats. This isn't necessarily the case. Also, don't be afraid to speak up if you are the one with the original thought. The Bible is full of times where many people were claiming to speak for God, but only one in the group was. Jeremiah, John the Baptist, and Micaiah in 2 Chronicles 18 are all classic examples of where everyone was saying the same thing, but one man was speaking the word of the Lord, despite what everybody else was saying. The best example of this is Jesus. And if we're going to be followers of Christ, there's going to be times where we will be the only one speaking up. The key thing is to use wisdom and be led by the Holy Spirit concerning when to speak up and when to let things be. You can cause just as much damage by speaking up out of your own ego and getting your jollies by bucking the trend as you can by being a coward and not speaking up when you should. All too often, what you want to do and what the Lord wants you to do isn't going to be the same thing. Just giving you a heads up. So despite what all is going around you, whether people approve or disapprove, be obedient, be humble, and most importantly, maintain your relationship with Jesus Christ. For Bones and myself, thanks for watching. Remember, if you're going to grow, you got to woe for yo. Get in the word for yourself. Have a good one.